Hello and welcome out there. This is my Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics vlog, episode number seven. My name is Victor Haltharp. I'm an Olympic speed skater and here in Beijing, it's my second Winter Olympics. And I'm here to share everything, all the emotions, all the experiences with all you guys on YouTube. So thanks a lot for tuning in. In this vlog, we're gonna talk about the ceremonies, the opening and closing ceremonies and how they are as an athlete. Most of you probably seen them on TV. In reality, they are impressive as well, but it's a lot different. In this video, I'm just gonna take you behind the curtains and share all that with you guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I decided it would make more sense to go at it chronologically. That way I'll, re I'll make sure to remember all the details so that you can re-experience everything that I enjoy. The way it actually goes is that we start more than four hours prior to the actual start of the ceremony. We're inside the Olympic Village we all gather up in teams, in bosses. So we meet up about half an hour before we go to the opening and closing ceremony venue where we're transported in a pre-waiting area before we even get to the venue itself. So everybody in hundreds of buses, really hundreds of bosses are going towards the venue. Here in our case in Beijing, it was super close. We could almost have walked, but to make sure that this COVID bubble we've been in during the Olympics is not gonna blow. We were only allowed to go by bus. So we went there, we all followed our little volunteer. They did a great job in, in controlling us and, and bringing everybody to the right places. So from the bus, we were guided into this waiting area where all the different countries, we we're all COVID safe, so to say. We all had to get tested the day before and the day off the ceremonies. So we all get to this waiting area where we can hang out with our friends. If you haven't seen your friends from different countries, from different delegations in a long time, this was really nice to catch up. And at the closing ceremony, we got to congratulate everybody that went away from these games with the medals and, and just to say goodbye in a really cool way. We did have a lot of time to do this because in this big waiting area, we were waiting for almost two entire hours. That's a long time. I spent the time taking photos with all the people that were there that played a big role in my personal journey getting to these Olympics and the people that I hope to spend more time with in the future as well. So that was pretty cool. We had snacks there, it was a long time. We left the village at 5.30 p.m. and I think we were back home at 11 p.m. So it was a lot of time without food, so we were really, really grateful to, to find out that they had snacks there. We ate as many snacks as we could, had some diet soda, it was also coffee, it was gonna be a long night. Uh, just to keep you awake, we started walking toward the venue itself, country by country. For the opening ceremony, it's all in alphabetic order, in French though. And for the closing ceremony, it is pretty random because it all just ends up in a big party and a big celebration. But to get to the venue, it was again a short walk where we followed each volunteer. Each country had their own volunteer and they knew exactly where to take us. There's a lot of security. I just want to make sure that at an event like this, there is no risks. Instead of walking, what you see in the TV, you see us walking straight into this big stadium, waving to all the audiences, the cameras. In real life, we do have a wait out here because of course you want to make sure everybody is lined up and ready to walk into the arena when it's their turn. It is just such a big show and it's so planned down to the details that everything has to plan out, play out perfectly. And it did, thankfully. So we stand there, we wait. The name of the nation is called and you walk in from this background area under the seating into the field, country by country. You can, given that we only walk in there when we're about halfway through the ceremony, uh, we also miss out on part of that. Here in Beijing, they made it pretty cool so that we could actually see, not the full image, but we could see most of the ceremony from where we were waiting and from where we were lined up before walking into the stadium. That was really cool. It is different though. When you see it on TV, a lot of the things, especially the things happening in, in air, um, we had drones here, there was a big screen or, or feel we just covered in one big screen uh, and on TV that looked incredible. When you were there itself, because you saw it from the side, it didn't turn out quite as um, as smooth as it was on the TV, but we all got the chance to relive this on a screen afterwards. And I mean, if you could pick, you would rather pick the experience of being at an Olympic ceremony in real life, of course. It's our turn. We walked in there behind the flag and then you get to the middle of the field where you line up and from here you just, you just enjoy it. I mean, there's good music, there's tons of happy people, you're waving to the stands. I even face 
face uh, FaceTime my family from the infield being at the opening ceremony and I had the chance to say hi to them on the TV in the meantime. That was just a surreal experience that I'll keep with me forever. And everybody was happy, there was dancing, and once all the nations uh, had assembled here in the middle of the field, we were brought to the stands where we could sit down. Uh, again, China is just so good at organizing stuff like that. They made sure we had mittens, we had a hat, we had a seat, a butt warmer, for the rest of the show here so we wouldn't get cold. And it got cold, so that was really nice to have that. From here, we could just um, watch the show. There was uh, the last two podiums at the Olympics were held. The ceremonies were held uh, on the infield here. That was cool to experience. And then the speeches, Xi Jinping, the, uh, Thomas Bach, the IOC president, and then the mayor of Beijing City uh, congratulating us and thanking us for taking part of these Olympics. And then ultimately they welcomed Milano, where it's gonna be in 2026. Hope I'll be part of that. That's for sure gonna be my goal the next four years. And they were handing over the torch because uh, they're gonna be up next. Just played a lot of good music and we enjoyed the show. Fireworks, we couldn't see it from inside the stadium. We can always re-watch that on TV. So for us, it was just so cool to be there. And uh, after this, everybody was taking out. That was a little bit messy, all in a big pile, but we did find our bus and we were brought back to the village where we could enjoy dinner. Got back to bed. Next morning, 8.30, we were on a flight, in my case, back home to Denmark, where I am now. I brought this as a souvenir. Pretty cool, huh? We did get a lot of souvenirs and I brought some extra gifts for friends and family and just all the people that were part of this. This is probably gonna be my last vlog from the Beijing Olympics. I will make one huge video where I just give you a recap of that entire experience because it's something I'll never forget. It's so fun to do this. All your comments when I read through those, realizing that I have to some extent managed to share some of the joy that I had here in Beijing with all you guys is, it's amazing. That's when you realize that sports is not just an egoistic thing, but you can actually give some back. Try and do that. And even though this is my last Olympic block, block um, I have this YouTube because I like to share what I do. I like to share my journey. And uh, even though I'm not going to be the, at the Olympics for the next four years, I will be training for it and I will be dreaming about it every single day. And I will share that journey with all of you guys. So for now, from the bottom of my heart, thanks for watching this. And... Um, Stay tuned, there's more to come. See you guys.